Hello investigators! A couple of months ago we made an amazing video explaining the wacky and arcane system of deluxe expansions, mythos packs and return to boxes that the Arkham Horror card game inherited from its living card game ancestors. It was very well received, so how did FFG thank us for our Herculean efforts? They changed their entire packaging model and got rid of the mythos packs! Those cheeky bastards! The Edge of the Earth is the seventh campaign for Arkham Horror the card game from Fantasy Flight Games, and whilst we don't really do clickbait preview videos on this channel, this cycle ushers in some dramatic changes, so here are all the shocking details. Still spoiler free in 60-ish seconds. First up, they are finally doing away with the deluxe expansion and 60 card monthly mythos packs that have caused people to lose their minds during the last year as they search for 7 different parts to assemble a full campaign. From now on, each new cycle will be divided into just 2 separate products. An investigator expansion containing 5 new characters and approximately 250 player cards for deck building. And a separate campaign expansion with over 300 scenario cards. So you don't need to wait 7 months to collect the whole thing and try and desperately to remember what the heck happened in the scenario you played a month ago. You can tackle the entire storyline Iron Man style as soon as you get the box home, or even in the store you purchase it from, assuming your country is not in lockdown by then. This also means that you can just pick up the campaign if you don't like the look of the investigators, or just pick up the investigators if you don't like the setting of the campaign. Card game products like this are designed a year or two in advance, so this change probably wasn't inspired by the current global shipping delays. But this undoubtedly convinced them they had to hurry up and implement it. After you have picked yourself up off the floor at this radical new change of format, get ready to freeze your extremities off as we are finally going to Antarctica. At the Mountains of Madness, published in 1931, is Lovecraft's third longest story, and definitely one of his most popular, and concerns an Antarctic expedition. We can see characters from the novella appearing as story asset allies in the preview, so there looks to be a strong connection to the source material present. You can read the preview article on the FFG website, but assuming you are too lazy, here are our top 5 takeaways. At number 5 we have pizza. Pizza is a great takeaway food. At number 4 we have hot dogs. Oh oh, sounds like Inspector Fox of the Light Entertainment Police Comedy Division Special Flying Squad is on the way. So back to the products. At number 5 we have the new investigators, who look like... Daniela Reyes, the mechanic. Monterey Jack, the archaeologist. Bob Jenkins the salesman, who better to sell ice to the Inuit, Norman Withers the astronomer, and catching a death of cold in that dress, Lily Chen the martial artist. At number 4 we have the return of multi-class cards, do you remember what a headache they were? Cards that count as belonging to more than one class and so can be included by a wider variety of investigators during deck building. Previously, these have upgraded to more powerful single class versions, so let's see what they do with them this time around. At number 3 we have selectable signature cards. Lily Chen has 4 signature bonus cards representing different martial arts disciplines, and she gets to choose only one of these cards during deck building. And they are also double sided just like Mark Harrigan's troublesome dead wife. At number 2 we finally get to see what Stormin Norman's actual signature cards are with the Livre de Ebon and the Harbinger revealed. And at number 1 both these products have different price points and look to have different sized boxes. This is all definitely just placeholder art but it looks like the models they used are the Square Legend of the Five Rings box for the Investigator expansion and the Portrait Style Marvel Champions box for the Campaign expansion. Don't get excited, these are just mock ups, but with these products having a higher price point than the usual deluxe boxes, they could spend the extra to get sturdier packaging, and maybe even an insert to organise things inside. Who knows? The release is listed as sometime later this year, so we would probably expect more news around Gen Con time, and keep your eye out for that second preview article they mentioned. Well that's your lot, sorry it took considerably longer than 60 seconds, but what can you do, eh?